This is Nikki, a gangster from New York. He smokes to calm his nerves. He smokes to forget. He smokes because every cigarette could be his last. So he smokes for the nihilistic titillation it provides him. Here's a little backstory about Nikki. Nikki Favrosi, the White Rose of New York. He moved to New York when he was four. His father, his father had his throat slit by the mafia because he wouldn't give up his family restaurant as a front. His mother died of grief. And 14-year-old Nikki was thrown into an orphanage with his brother and sister. Now you're probably wondering why a New York mobster is smoking a cigarette in a small town just outside of London. Well, we'll get into that. But first, you need to understand how deeply affected this man is by his past. gift fate so graciously gave. So that's why Nikki smokes. Smokes the cigarette. You're probably thinking that Nikki is some soppy motherfucker who's stuck in his own head. Well, you'd be wrong. Nikki's a fucking gangster. He does not give a fuck. Nikki is the type of guy who pisses in the middle of your room. You fuck with Nikki, he'll fucking murder you. This is Nikki's 1911, also known as a Colt 1911 or the Colt Government. A semi-automatic, single-action, magazine-fed, recoil-operated pistol, chambered in 45 ACP. Nikki got it when he was 16. It's been his gun ever since. Now, we'll get into why Nikki is really in London shortly, 
But before we do, Nikki has a few, how do you say, errands to run. This is Ginger. Ginger is a nihilistic and narcissistic drug addict who can't help but cause trouble. Nikki met her at a New York Playboy club party in 1975 on number 5 East 59th Street. You know, a classic Playboy party with Ginger being one of the bunnies. Well, Nikki took this lady home and she pulled a runner the next morning with 15 grand of cocaine from Nikki's personal supply. Now, Ginger's presence in London was due to a party being held at the Playboy Casino in 45 Park Lane. So Nikki decided he would finish their brief encounter up. When in Rome, I guess. This is Nico, the leader of a little street rat gang in London. The two don't know each other. All Nico knows is that he wants Nikki's wallet. This is Peter, Peter Anthony Tibbs, 
a London intellectual. Now, Peter's involvement with Nikki is an interesting one. Peter managed to commit five million dollars of insurance fraud without being caught. Truly an intellectual man. Now, Peter spent two and a half million dollars of his fraudulent money on bulk cocaine directly from Nikki. Peter had some romanticized dream about overtaking the English drug market. Now, $2.5 million is a lot of cocaine, but definitely not that much. Truthfully, Peter didn't like Nicky at all. He looked down at him, thought he was too clever or something. Now, realistically, Nicky did not give a fuck. He was about to make $2.5 million in sale to one person. No middleman, no runners, easy. So, the deal happened about a month ago. One of Nikki's goons who handed over the coke said that Peter had a lot to say about some of Nikki's questionable briar flings. Something not a lot of people know about. So here's Nikki to show Peter what happens when you offend him. Nikki, what are you doing here? Nikki, wait! London Town, the most famous city in the world. Nikki is in this wonderfully dynamic city for a deal. I guess you would have never guessed that. That may have been obvious, but what's not so obvious is that this deal is the biggest deal of Nikki's life. Not only that, it's the biggest deal in the history of the Mafia. To create a collaborative drug empire with the Chinese Mafia, the Triads. Nikki acting as the import and supply, the triads is the cross-continental dealers. A true mafia superpower. Complete and utter control. This was the deal to end all deals. This was the deal that let Nikki resign and never touch drugs again. Enough money to live an extraordinary life of incomparable decadence and luxury with his two siblings. This was his family's ticket out. Now, everything I've told you, I know because Nikki knows. But what you need to understand is what I'm about to tell you is something that Nikki should have seen from a mile away, but didn't. Putting it plainly, the leader of the fucking Mafia is meeting three and a half thousand miles away from his hometown by himself. The Triad knew this. One person standing in front of them had access to the entire Western world's drug empire. I 
truthfully think that Nikki's childhood desire to have a family and to be content consumed him in London. He lost his intrinsic sense of rationality at the thought of having a family again. I think maybe he thought he could undo the past by making this deal. That it would allow him in some way to have the childhood he never had. He didn't bring his gun. He didn't bring his knife. He simply brought a cigarette and the one sample kilogram of cocaine. This cigarette would truly be his last. The yellowing of the white rose. This beautiful soul finally completed. In his brief moments before death, he was content. I know all this because Nicky was my older brother. He spent his whole life trying to keep me from his work, but now I have no choice.
I belong in this world? All that I can think about singing you this song I made from mud. I wish that I could. Never 